very much, Mr. House Chair. Mr. President, in November 2017, you promised, if you were elected leader of your party, that you would implement a 10-point New Deal. You echoed Franklin D. Roosevelt. And you promised to pull millions of South Africans out of poverty and into the mainstream economy. We stand here six and a half years later, and that landscape, that utopian landscape you painted then, has not come to pass. What we instead have is the shadow of unfulfilled promises and a deepening economic crisis. And this is because of the failures of your government, particularly in job creation. You broke the very first promise that you made to this country. And the young people bear the brunt of this crisis. 70% of young people aged 15 to 24 have been unable to secure jobs. And the government's stranglehold on the business environment has choked the ability for this economy to create jobs. Unemployment has surged from 20% in 1994, since we hear a lot in this debate about the progress since 1994. So let's look at some progress. 20% unemployment in 1994. We now have 32.9% unemployment in 2024. When you include people who have given up looking for work because they cannot find a job, that unemployment rate is an alarming 42.4%. Now, to add insult to injury, instead of rectifying our economic mistakes, the ANC has shifted the burden onto a shrinking tax base and plans to do so again later this month in the budget. Slow economic growth has created a tax-to-GDP ratio of 25%, which is one of the highest in the world. South Africans have one of the highest tax to GDP ratios in the world. So the Africans are overburdened with tax. And these citizens pay much more tax compared not to wealthy countries, but to developing and middle income countries. The citizens, through tax, are paying a huge financial price to fund the ANC's failures. Now, government's failure to manage public debt has pushed us towards a fiscal crisis, and 20% of all government revenue is now dedicated to servicing debt. Not healthcare, not police, not teachers, debt. And this means that we have limited resources for investment into infrastructure and essential services. National debt is now over 5.2 trillion rand. And South Africa cannot go on like this. And in the debate today so far, we've heard the ANC double down on BE and CADA deployment, which shows us who their true constituency is. It is not the millions of South Africans looking for work or looking for opportunity. Their real constituencies are a handful of catered employees and a few thousand BEE billionaires. And their entire system, as they've debated today so far, shows us who they're going to take care of should they attempt to win another election. So, so South Africa cannot go on like this. And thankfully, every piece of information shows us, Mr. President, that you are the outgoing president. And we will not have to face... If the voters make the right choices, we will not face a green-red coalition of doom, but we will have a blue coalition for change. Now, let me tell you what the blue coalition for change, a DA-led government, will do. I see the ANC is heckling a lot when we mention the coalition for change. It is precisely because they're terrified that they're all going to be prosecuted for corruption and maladministration whenever we mention the change of government. But this blue coalition of change will get the economic engine revving again. It is essential to do so to lift millions of people out of poverty. And we will do so by overhauling labor regulations that limit job growth. We will make sure that young people and older people who have been locked out of the economy get skills through apprenticeships and development programs. And we will boldly put an end finally to apartheid classification of race and employment equity and prefer preferential procurement. We will no longer use those outdated and crass categories to classify people. Our focus will be on meritocracy and non-racialism to make sure that diversity and merit thrive. On the tax system, we will commit to no new taxes, unlike what the finance minister will be announcing in a month from now. We will also prevent hidden tax increases and to make sure the poor are taken care of, who are struggling with a cost of living crisis, the ANC MPs who earn all more than a million rand here love to heckle about the poor. None of them are in that basket. But for the poor out there, we will expand the zero-rated VAT food basket so that you can buy chicken, you can buy essential nutrients, and you can feed your families. And lastly, we will make sure that everyone pays their fair share of taxes, 
by ensuring that SARS has the capabilities that will undo the gutting of SARS under state capture. We'll also rescue public finances from the fiscal cliff. We will stabilize public debts. We will make sure that we don't waste government money, unlike the, the hecklers on the side over here. And we will end this obsessive culture of bailouts to state-owned enterprises. And I'm looking forward to the Appropriations Committee on Wednesday because I believe SAA has lost another 700 million rand in the last year. And we look forward to taking you on in bailouts there. We will also rescue small businesses and we will make sure we build an we will build an export-orientated economy that makes sure that we, we rescue South Africa from this economic calamity. This is not going to come about through any new it's deal or new dawn. It will not come about through any new deal or new dawn. And as we look back, we've gone from a new deal to a new dawn to a false dawn and now to Ramageddon. So the choice for our country is clear. We can't carry on with unfulfilled promises. Thank you to the ANC. Your time is up as mine now ends as well. But we will get a better tomorrow through a blue coalition of change that rests in South Africa. Up.